Oh, just to belong. Just to belong. Just to belong. Just to belong. In a family. In a family. God's family. God's family. Just to be one. Just to be one. Of his daughters and sons. It's what we really want. Precious in His sight when we sing our Father's praise. Just to belong, just to belong, just to belong, just to belong in a family, in a family, God's family, God's family, just to be one. Of his daughters and sons. That's what we really want. To be known and loved. No one alone in this place. Precious in the sight when we sing our Father's prayer. In God's family, there's a place for me. In God's family. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, good morning. It's a lovely, lovely sunny day yeah. when we're recording this. As you can see, we're sitting in our garden, as I no doubt many of you are as well. And isn't it just a lovely blessing, don't you think, from yeah. God, that he's given us this beautiful mm. weather in this lockdown t lockdown period? It, it somehow feels easier to bear, doesn't it, yeah, when it the does, sun yeah. is shining? So yeah. I hope you're able to enjoy it as we are this morning. So this morning is the beginning of the church, the church's birthday. It's Pentecost Sunday when the Holy Spirit was first poured out upon those first disciples. And we're going to be celebrating that as we go through this morning mm. service. Mm. So it's really good to have you with us. If you're a regular to Vale Community Church, really good to be with you again. And for those of you, perhaps uh, you might be worshipping at other churches who don't have online services and you're joining us, really good to have you with us. And for others as well, uh, who might be watching from who knows where. It's really good to, to have you with us as well. And for our older folk who are watching this on DVD or are listening to it on CD, welcome to you as well. We hope you feel a part of us as we gather on this special Sunday, as we think about that, the outpouring of the, the Holy Spirit. So it's good to have you with us. It's good to be able to come and worship and to give God the thanks and the honour that's due his name. 
Um, last week was Ascension Sunday and as a part of the children's talk I put about I put out um, a request that anybody might like to write down how many things they can think of that go up. Well the winner I'm pleased to say was Kerry Ann and her children. Well done, Kerry so well done girls, girls and Kerry Ann thank you for putting that in and, and um, well done for winning. Um, now this week as with many of the weeks we will be having a number of Zoom meetings um, if you want to know more about that and want to be part of any of those, then just get in touch with Steve. Mm. Um, we are doing our Bible course at the moment, which is going really well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, yeah, um, it's great. It's lovely. So it's, it isn't really too late. If you wanted to join that, you, you could. You'll soon so, catch up on the videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm. if you want to be part of that, just let Steve know. That would be really good. Sarah has uh, sent us an update from the orphanage in uh, Nepal. Prem, who's the, uh, the house father there, um, of the children's home, has established uh, a new church seven kilometres um, away. And the church is made up mainly of women, as uh, none of the men are Christian yet, they're Hindu, and uh, they won't let them, their husbands or, or, or their fathers won't let them meet in their homes. Uh, there are 25 members of the church, which, are, which is fantastic. There are uh, 12 adults and 15 children. So it would be really good to, to, con, uh, to think about them in our, in our prayer times and to remember them and just to pray God's blessing on, on, this, on this band of, uh, of ladies and children who, who, have, uh, who are, are finding faith. And uh, let's pray as well that uh, their faith might rub off on their fathers and, and their husbands. And so let's hold that in our prayers. For folk who would uh, normally give through the bag on a Sunday, like we said a, a few weeks ago, if you'd just like to, to hang on to that and uh, then we can arrange for Trevor to have that perhaps when we're all back together sometime in the future or, or we, we might be able to uh, make a way for you to be able to pay it through the bank or whatever uh, just get in touch with trevor if you'd uh, if you sort of save some of that money up and you'd like to give big thank you to all of you who, who give regularly through the bank even though we're not meeting at school there are obviously different costs that we we have to meet during this time and as as we've said in the past it is part of our worship it's an important part of our worship god has given us everything and, and it's a part of us giving back to him and to his work we obviously realise that for some people it could be a really difficult time financially. We're seeing on the news about numbers of people being laid off or being, being furloughed. If, if, it, if it is an issue for you, if you are struggling in any way, if you'd just like to give myself a call or give Judith a call, um, whether you, you might need support with food at this time or whatever it is, just, just, just let us know. Yeah, um, I know many of you, in fact probably all of you, um, are praying for different mm. things we obviously have a lot to pray mm. for at this moment in time and really we do need to be on our knees to cry out to god for the this uh, pandemic to come mm. to some sort of end and conclusion but also of course there are local prayers and people that are known to us that we also need to hold up before god and mm. one of those is carolyn carolyn costa who we're praying for at the moment um, please continue to pray for her. We've had some really good news in a sense that um, she's now able to get out into the hospital mm, garden for yeah. a bit. And I think they even took the dog in, which yes, was quite did, yeah. something. Yeah. And, and Carolyn um, was out there for about half an hour. But there's still a lot of prayer that is needed because they're not quite sure yet mm. as to the extent of the disability that may be for mm, Carolyn yeah. as a result of this. So mm. this could be life-changing so mm. let's continue to pray and ask that God would continue to cause a miracle because that's mm. what it is um, in mm. their lives um, today we also ought to think about Anne and Mike mm. because obviously Anne's dad died last week and we continue to hold them in our prayers and so we we are remembering you Anne and Mike and mm. what is we know is a difficult time ordinarily but also very much more so at this time in this lockdown period um, this week we've got various people who mm. will be taking part. Um, we've got Russ and Carol mm. who are leading our worship. Yeah. Um, we've got Stephen, not Steve, Stephen, um, Gordon Wilson, who's doing a little bit about what life is like in lockdown for him. Mm. Um, we've got Liz who is doing our prayers and doing our reading. 
Is it prayers she's doing? She's doing the prayers, yeah. She's doing the prayers, that's right. Mm. And a number of other people are doing the readings, which yeah. Kevin has um, yeah. kindly put together, which is... We won't say any more, but let's okay. leave that. We'll right. leave that uh, as a surprise <laughs> when okay. we come to our reading. But thanks, Kev. That's, yeah. Um, it's, yeah, brilliant. We've had a little preview and yeah. it, it really is lovely. Yeah. Um, now, birthdays. Birthdays, yeah. yeah. Stop, mind with, your head. <laughs> whoops, whoops, Daisy. Uh, with, uh, it's Amanda's birthday today. Right. Happy birthday, Amanda. Happy birthday. Hope you have a lovely day. Yeah. Uh, and on Monday, it's... Kevin Godfrey's birthday and on Tuesday it's Brenda's birthday so we'll do the usual we'll sing our two verses absolutely yeah and I hope you're joining in with us because yeah. we feel a bit silly just singing happy birthday yeah. in our garden so please join in with us are we ready what the neighbours think no goodness knows what well they're used to that yeah. <laughs> ready happy, happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday Dear Amanda, Kevin and Brenda, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true. May God's riches blessings abide upon you. Happy birthday, yeah, all happy three birthday, of you. Happy birthday, all of you. Have a lovely day. Yeah. Okay, we're going to come to uh, our call to worship now, and uh, we'll say together the words on the screen. So let us pray. Move, Move among, among us, Spirit, spirit and gather, gather us together, together with, with you. you. Take, Take our, our many selves, our lives, our loves, our ideas, our questions, our speech, our silence, and unite us as your people. Give us the gifts of perception and understanding, so that even as we dream your dreams and see your visions, we may be able to be witness to your presence in our common life. Amen. We're now going to hand over to Russ and Carol for our worship. And it's really lovely that uh, we've now been able to put some sound in and Russ and Carol can actually, we can actually see them uh, <laughs> singing live, which is, which is so good. It's so much better than having uh, clips and, and using icing worship. So thank you so much to, to both of you for being willing to do it and serve God in this way. Good morning, everyone. Pentecost, when God gave a special anointing to mankind of the power of the Holy Spirit. This picture behind us is a print from the original, which is a much larger painting on silk by a Christian artist called Anne House. Anne House was inspired by some of the words of Old Testament prophecy, which are found in the book of Joel, chapter 2, and it says this, I will pour out my spirit on all people, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We thought it was appropriate to use it today when we remember the events at Pentecost. And you know, the more I look at this picture, the more biblical images of the Holy Spirit I see. Now Jesus, he knew that the disciples needed the Holy Spirit to put their head knowledge into a different dynamic. And so it is with our sung worship. We need the Holy Spirit to lift our worship out from the dutiful and into a heart that flows with adoration and praise. Matt Redman put it beautifully in his song, When the Music Fades. He said, I long to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart more than a song for a song in itself. Um, is not what you require. And this is so true. So you see, it is not the song that pleases God, but our spiritual fervour, only brought about by the Holy Spirit embedded in our hearts. So Lord, I pray this morning that each one of us is filled with the Holy Spirit. And as we sing these songs of truth and adoration and praise. We're going to sing two songs. First one is, We Believe in God the Father. In the second verse it says, We believe He sends His Spirit on His church with gifts of power. 
and then we're going to sing my Jesus my Saviour thank you for this opportunity together to worship you to give you praise and glory to your name the name that is above all names the name where we can come to you and bless your name through our heart's desire and adoration and praise so we're going to sing my Jesus my Saviour
turn it on. Now can any of you see the air coming out of that hairdryer? No, we can't see it can we? So if we can't see the air, how do we know that it's working? Well, you're right, you can hear it. Now if I hold these streamers to the hairdryer, we still won't be able to see the air, but what we will see is the effects of the air. We can see the streamers blowing, can't we? And finally, I can tell the hairdryer is working because I can feel the air and that's really, really rather hot on a hot sunny day. Now, I've done all this today because today we are thinking about a very special time in the church's calendar and that time is called Pentecost. Now it wasn't that long ago, was it, that we were thinking about Easter and how Jesus died and how he rose again. And when he rose again, he appeared to lots of his disciples and lots of other people as well. And then we heard about how he gave a special message to everybody, to said, go out and tell everybody about me. Then after that, we hear that he was taken up into heaven. And we thought about that last week when we call it that that day we call ascension day well when jesus ascended to heaven he didn't just leave his disciples and said well i've told you everything you need to know so i'm not going to be with you anymore because they were scared and they were lonely and jesus promised and he still does promise that he is with us all the time and so he had to go back up to heaven to be with god the father so that his spirit could be released to all those who want to have it. And that is what happened at Pentecost. And we're now going to see a short video clip of that story. Stories of the Bible. God sends the Holy Spirit. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. See ya! So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Whoa! Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages, and so they started speaking. 
At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. What's going on? When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. Hey, do you hear this? They wondered, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? Nah, whatever. But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle and thought the believers were just acting oddly. Nah. Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, Hey, all you! Listen carefully, all you! He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them as he had promised. Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt, and they asked, Brothers, what should we do? Peter told them, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Take this. Ah, thank you. They helped those in need. Here, this is for you. Thank you. Worshiped together at the temple every day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So there we have it, the story of Pentecost. And the Bible says they heard a very strong wind, just like we heard the air coming out of the hairdryer. The Bible also tells us that they saw flames over their heads. So although they couldn't see the Holy Spirit, they knew he was there, just like we saw the streamers moving in front of the hairdryer. And finally, the Bible tells us that they could feel the power of the Holy Spirit. They even spoke in different languages so everybody could hear the good news of Jesus, just like I could feel the air from the hairdryer. So the Holy Spirit is still with us today. We can't see him, but he gives us thoughts to do good things. He helps make us brave when we feel a bit scared and he guides us through every single day of our lives if we so wish. Now, Steve will have sent through some worksheets. I think they will have been emailed. You might, you've had one of these, a Pentecost worksheet to do if you wish to. And for a craft, I thought we could do this. It's a flame to go over your heads, which again, you should have been sent. And it ends up, you can color it. I'm not very good at coloring, so I didn't color mine, but you cut it out and color it. And then you get some white paper or some card and just make a headband. And that goes on your head. Just like that. And if you weren't want to do that, you could have a go at this craft again. This should have been sent through to you. They are spinners. And what you need to do is to cut out two circles. I mean, there's too many there, but if you go wrong, there's so many spares. So cut two out and stick them back to back. And then pierce a hole in the middle. Get some cotton or some wool of some sort. And then you just spin them. So you go one, two, three, and then pull it tightly and then it'll spin like the Holy Spirit's flame. Okay, so let's pray, shall we? Let's just close our eyes for a moment. Father God, thank you for this time of Pentecost. Thank you that when you left your disciples, you didn't just go back to heaven and leave us alone, that you sent your Holy Spirit to give us power and to assure us that you are with us every single day of our lives. Thank you that you promised never to leave us. Amen. 
hope you have a good week and um, someone will see you next week Got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed redeemer way down in the in my heart, Where? down in the depths of my heart, Where? down in the depths of my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart, Where? down in the depths of my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Hello, happy Sunday to you. Lockdown, hey? How's it been for you? Not too bad for us, not too different from normal. Um, I usually do most of my work sitting here at this very desk, um, which has been the same. The only difference is where I go out and meet clients and see people. I've been doing it like this on Zoom, which has been interesting. And actually, I wonder if, um, if that might change and I might go out a bit less when the lockdown's lifted and might do a few more meetings like this. Certainly save on petrol, wouldn't it? Um, in terms of uh, prayer life, I've been able to spend a lot more time uh, in prayer, particularly as we've been running at Vale, the, the Wednesday night Bible class, which has been really helpful. Um, so I've been able to focus what I've been doing in terms of Bible reading and prayer that way. Uh, the daily devotions have been great as well, as have the Sunday services like this one. So thank you, Liz and Steve, for organising those. And the Bible class, as I say, has been really, really helpful. Uh, we've been getting together on a Wednesday night and there's been daily readings every day as well. So that's been fantastic. But I suppose the big difference really about lockdown is that the children haven't been at school. So we have been spending a lot more time with them. Hi, hope you're all well. Um, in lockdown, I've been doing all my homework on my computer. I've been writing lots of work on Word documents and Google documents. And um, yeah, so I've been doing all my schoolwork, including math, science, English, everything like that. And then when I'm not doing work, I'm playing a game called Adopt Me um, slash Roblox, which, yeah, is all confusing to you probably. Um, so I just enjoy playing Roblox on my on one of my accounts my main accounts locked for some reason um i just enjoy <coughs> playing with my um, monkey banana split on this off ish account here i'm painting my flower bed i'm just redoing it because the paint has got like worn away over the year so i repainted it pink which was the original color and then I'm doing something new to it, which is painting like details like stripes or polka dots or hearts or something on with this white-ish paint. And I think it's going to look really nice. And um, I play lots of other fun stuff in the garden as well, like in the, in the paddling pool, on the swing, on the trampoline. And um, yeah, I spend a lot of time outside. It's really nice and warm in lockdown. And I bet everyone that on the first day we're allowed back out, it will rain. So yes, we've been very lucky that we've got a garden. I know some people haven't, but being able to spend time outside as a family or just coming out for a bit of peace and quiet has been lovely as well, actually. 
Um, I'm not much of a gardener, but I do find it quite therapeutic to at least keep the lawn mowed. So no, is it mowed behind me? Sort of. Um, and the kids have really enjoyed it. Ted's been doing, uh, growing his own vegetables. Where are they? He's been doing a, doing a good old try at growing his own vegetables. Um, yeah, Lily Bob's been really enjoying painting her flower bed. We're going to head out to a garden centre at some point and plant some plants in there as well, which will be pretty cool. Hi again. Um, so most of the time I'm on my phone watching an app called TikTok. Um, I just like scrolling through it a lot. Um, and it's really fun because there's lots of magic, there's pranks, there's... Um, there's lots of stuff like that. Um, sorry, I get lost a buzz when I'm on my phone and not paying attention really. Um, so yeah, I also play lots of games that aren't TikTok because I only get an hour of it, sadly. Um, I like to call my friends on WhatsApp a lot. Um, she's slightly bonkers and goes off on her own trail of thought when she's on a phone. Oh well, wouldn't have her any other way, would we? Um, as for hobbies when I'm not working, I read a lot. I'm a very avid reader. Um, I've been reading a lot of fiction. I've been reading a lot of um, religious books, actually. Hang on. Here's one. I've just finished this one, which is fascinating. If you're talking about um, kids on phones all the time, it's about what well, it says there, connecting everything you... Connecting faith with everything that you watch, play, and read. Really, really interesting book. Um, I recommend it. If you want to borrow it, let me know. It's sitting there. Other than that, all is well, really. We are muddling on through as we do, um, and really looking forward to being back together as a church. Really nice to virtually see you. Hopefully, see you in person really soon. Bye bye. The world is united by an enemy. A virus that is stealing lives and spreading fear. For years to come, we will be remembered for how we responded. For staying home and protecting our communities. And also for loving our global neighbours. We will be remembered for praying, for giving, to help them respond. In Afghanistan, Nepal, Mozambique, Sri Lanka, Chad, Albania and across the globe. For feeding the hungry, for counselling the sick for providing protective equipment on the front lines, for helping to stop the spread. Remembered for being united, together. Remembered for standing in solidarity. The world is hurting and we can help. BMS World Mission is responding to the coronavirus pandemic. We're helping to coordinate the Global Baptist response and we're doing it now in the name of Jesus. You can be a part of it. You can stand in solidarity with people around the world fighting coronavirus and feeling its effects. You can look back on this time and know that you did everything in your power to help. You can respond today. We are the body of Christ. And that means we have to stand by our brothers and sisters living in poverty, near and far, to limit the impact of this deadly virus. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Jesus told us, Remember I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Thank you for the doctors and nurses attending the seriously ill across the world. Thank you for the scientists working on finding effective medicines and a vaccine for COVID-19. Thank you for the British charity workers bringing practical support to those in need across the world. We pray that you will keep doctors and nurses safe across the world 
including our own NHS workers, as they risk their lives in the fight against coronavirus. We pray particularly for medics across the world, where protective equipment is in short supply or even non-existent. We pray that you will bless the work of scientists who are developing treatments and vaccines for COVID-19. We particularly pray for the trials being carried out across the world by Oxford University, that you will give the research scientists clarity and understanding as they go about their work. We pray for the World Health Organization and the leaders of national governments as they strive to find ways to contain the virus. We pray that they will make wise, proactive decisions that will benefit all countries and the global community. Lord, we pray for conflicts across the world, such as the war in Syria, now in its 10th year, producing the largest refugee crisis of our time. 5.6 million people have fled to Syria as refugees, the vast majority of them women and children, now living in camps in Iraq, Jordan and Lebanon. We pray for charities like World Vision and Christian Aid, working in the refugee camps, where the crowded conditions will lead to a rapid spread of this virus. We pray for water, particularly in Africa, in countries like Uganda, where drought due to climate change has led to poor harvests and rising food prices. People have to walk miles to collect water every day making every drop precious at a time when we are being told we must wash our hands frequently if we are to fight the virus. We pray for charities like Water A, distributing soap and teaching hand washing techniques that can serve water. We pray for countries like India where there is no furlough and lockdown has meant that people have lost their jobs and have no money to buy food. People are forced to go back to their villages with their families, walking often barefoot, hundreds of miles in scorching temperatures with no food or water. We thank you for the journalist who gave up his shoes to one such labourer, showing that every single one of us can make a difference. Above all, Father, awaken us to the reality of how connected we all are so that we can work together to create a better world in the future. In Jesus' name, Amen. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in their own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who are in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. 
No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and the signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord and everyone will be saved. And everyone calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Well, everyone, um, we thought it'd be good at this point, and just before Steve comes to bring God's word, to sing the song, O oh, Let the Son of God Enfold You, which goes on to say, and with his spirit and his love, let him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. So we sing it together as a prayer. Oh, let the Son of God took part in our reading and to to Kevin for putting it to together for us. I don't know about you but from an early age I've been fascinated by feats of power from the the flying Scotsman thundering past me as I as I stood on on a railway bridge doing nearly a hundred miles an hour 
to, to a rocket, uh, helping to get a capsule into space on its way to the moon, spewing out fire and smoke as it leaves the launch pad to to a golfer the other day hitting a golf ball in a long drive competition over 470 yards i'm enthralled by displays of power now all of these require a source of power whether it's steam fuel or muscle however Few people realise that there's a, a source of dynamic supernatural power that supersedes all humanly produced powers. A transforming power that we all need if we want to please God, to live the lives that he calls us to and to receive the gift of eternal life. What is this power? It's the awesome power of God's Holy Spirit. In Acts 1.8, Jesus told his disciples, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And the Greek word used here for power is dynamis, from which we get the word dynamite. The Holy Spirit possesses a dynamite-like power that works within a believer to, to blast out anything that isn't godlike. It's not a power that, that lifts one person above another or that manipulates or controls others or enables a person to become independent of others. The Holy Spirit uses his power to break us so that he might remake us. Now, during the last six weeks, we've been looking at the resurrection appearances of Jesus up to his ascension to heaven last Sunday. And as we've been doing that, we've seen the different emotions experienced by those who saw him. Fear, doubt, bewilderment, scepticism, surprise, grief, to, to name but a few. Now, seven weeks after Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, we find the disciples, along with other followers, 120 in all, gather together with the doors bolted because of fear of the authorities waiting for the power that Jesus had promised. And then on the day of Pentecost, God begins to demonstrate that power using physical miracles to draw attention to a much greater spiritual miracle. First, God sends a sound like the blowing of a violent wind. Second comes the appearance of tongues of fire that came to rest on each of the disciples. And third, God gives them the ability to speak in languages that they haven't learned. And as you can imagine, all of this drew a crowd of amazed people because each one of them heard their own language being spoken. God then uses Peter to powerfully proclaim that this was the beginning of what was foretold by the prophet Joel, who wrote that uh, God would pour out his spirit on all people. And as you read that passage in Joel, Joel's words clearly show that God's spirit is a spirit of power. And when many of the people recognised their sins, the part they'd played in crucifying Jesus, who Peter called Lord and Messiah, they asked Peter and the others, what shall we do? Peter replies, repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. And about 3,000 people respond. By being baptised and receiving God's Holy Spirit, they receive that awesome spiritual power that would transform their lives. That day, the New Testament church was launched with power. That day was the beginning of the power of the Holy Spirit living within those who Jesus saves. We see the 11 disciples now powerfully transformed, radically changed. Before Pentecost, they, they were ordinary men not scholars, leaders or linguists, and like us, they were often bumbling. They panicked in the face of danger. They kept missing the point of what Jesus was teaching. 
We find them thinking that the kingdom was about to come, competing for top spot, rebuking Jesus for talking about the cross, falling asleep during a crucial time of prayer, scattering and even denying they knew Jesus when he was arrested, hiding in fear from authorities after the crucifixion. But after the Holy Spirit was poured out on them, they stood up to the very ones they had previously been cowering in fear of. They were filled with joy, even in the face of great suffering, living lives that became vibrant testimony to Jesus, going all over the world to boldly proclaim the gospel of Jesus, loving not only their friends, but even their enemies, willing to die for the cause of Christ. Their lives were transformed. The power of the Holy Spirit enabled the disciples to turn the world upside down with the powerful preaching of the gospel. They couldn't have accomplished this in their own power. The good news is that that same power is available to us today. Jesus promised this power and we can have it in our lives as well if we desire it. But to experience the power of the Holy Spirit, we must acknowledge our utter helplessness and our complete dependence on God. The problem is too often we rely on our own strength and willpower to make changes in our lives, which inevitably leads us to a place of defeat. The more we get self out of the way and surrender our will to his, the more powerfully he is able to transform our lives. The power is his. We're, we're only the channels. To receive God's Holy Spirit, we must repent, which means to change and turn from a life based on the world's ways to a life based on God's commands as demonstrated by Jesus. The Holy Spirit, as his name implies, works to make us holy. He brings us to salvation in Jesus and then conforms us into his likeness and sends us out into the world to ministry, to serve others. Some examples of the Spirit's work include supernaturally revealing Jesus to us, leading us, guiding us, comforting us, convicting us of our sins when we do wrong, but also leading us to the grace and the mercy found in Jesus' love. He helps us pray. He helps us fight against temptation. He gives us supernatural gifts to extend God's kingdom here on earth. He produces godly fruit in us so that we might reflect Jesus in the world around us. He makes us brave and bold to share the good news of God's love. He reveals God's word to us and helps us understand the mysteries of God's heart. This is who the Spirit is and he can live in us if we ask. The thing is though, how often as Christians do we live instead like we're poor and helpless, unaware of the extraordinary power at our disposal through the gift of the Holy Spirit? You may never have felt this power. You may never have expressed this power. You may never have been told you had this power. You may never have thought yourself spirit filled, or you may even shudder when you hear the term. If you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit already lives within you. The moment you received Jesus, the Holy Spirit not only came to live in you, but he gave you spiritual life, causing you to be born again as a child of God. The Holy Spirit also baptised you into the body of Christ. However, being filled with the Spirit isn't a once for all experience. There are, there are many feel, uh, fillings, as made clear by Paul in Ephesians 5.18 where he talks, he says, instead, be filled with the Spirit. He's talking about uh, not getting drunk on wine. And if you think about uh, when you do get drunk on wine, you, you feel like you can do anything. You have the power to do anything, but it doesn't last for long. And the consequences can be a really nasty hangover. He said, instead, be filled with the Spirit. And in the original Greek, be filled means keep on being filled constantly and continually. 
When the American evangelist of the 19th century, D.L. Moody, was asked why he said he needed to be filled continually with the Holy Spirit, he replied, because I leak. So that's so true. Like Moody, we all run out of power and need the power of the Holy Spirit to recharge our lives. Each encounter with the Holy Spirit is unique and powerful in its own right. That's why each morning I use the song, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mould me, fill me. Let me ask us, do we want more power in our lives as Christians? Are we tired of being stuck in a rut, perhaps going round the same old circle time and time again? Do we yearn for a faith that will strengthen us and empower us in our daily lives to live the way that God has purposed us to live? Do we want more power for Vale Community Church to witness the good news of Jesus in our community? Do we want Vale Community Church to be a vital, vibrant place of faith where people experience God's love and then share that love with others? Well, the power of the Holy Spirit is available. We can release that power within us by surrendering our rights to God, yielding control of our lives to Jesus, opening ourselves up to the Spirit's presence. Do we have that desire? Or do we want to remain as we are? The day of Pentecost represents the only way we can really change our lives. We need the power of God's Spirit working within us to be the kind of transformed people God wants us to be. Remember Peter? With the help of God's Spirit, he went from being an underachieving disciple to becoming a bold apostle of Jesus and a representative of the kingdom of God. We too can experience this change in our lives with the power of God's Holy Spirit through the miracle that happened on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Today, I think it's time that we get right with the Lord. We're going to spend some time now in silence to come before him and empty ourselves of the world's influences and our selfish ways, asking him to highlight anything in our life that's offensive to him, and then confess it and repent of it. So we'll come to a time of silence now. I'm going to lead us now in a prayer to ask God to fill us with his spirit that we, we might know his power and anointing to, to live for and serve him. Perhaps you might like to hold your hands out with your palms up as a sign of wanting to receive. Come Holy Spirit and rekindle within me the fire of your love. I have surrendered to the best of my ability, and now I want to be filled with your spirit. I need your power in my life. Please come and refill me now. Lord, I believe that when I surrendered to you as Lord, we became one. 
You are the vine and I am a branch in the vine. All that you are is within me. My life flows from you. I believe that as I yield and ask, you will release your gifts of wisdom and understanding, of counsel and might, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discernment, tongues and interpretation of tongues. I need them to witness to a hurting world. Only in your power, guided by your spirit, can my life be fruitful. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. I want it all wrapped up in the greatest gift of all, love. Melt me, mould me, fill me, use me. Give me opportunities to use your gifts to reveal your love and mercy. Stretch me, Lord. I won't limit your gifts to my perceptions of what I can handle. Holy Spirit, expand my capacity. Work in me in a powerful way. I want every purpose God has for my life to be fulfilled. And I need you, mighty Spirit of God, to bring that purpose to fulfilment. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence with me, flowing freely in me and through me. Thank you for being my friend, my teacher, my comforter, my counsellor, my intercessor, and the giver of extravagant gifts. Amen. If you're not a Christian and you're wondering what on earth is the Holy Spirit that I've been talking about this morning, then if you'd like to look at the, the slides that are going to follow our, our service this morning, you'll see a page that you can go to on our website and, and to look out for, for details of when we'll run an Alpha course. And three of the sessions in that course are all about the, the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? What does the, the Holy Spirit do? What's the work of the Holy Spirit? There's also a slide on there as well uh, with a link to a site where if you've got any questions about the Christian faith, you can go to that site and there are lots of videos and articles that we pray uh, God would speak to you through and would lead you to a point where you'd want to give your life to this wonderful God that we follow. And you yourself might receive that power, the power of the Holy Spirit to live the life that God has purposed you for. We're now going to head back over to Russ and Carol and uh, they're going to lead us in our last song. Well, we thought it would be good to end with a song from Scripture about the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to sing a song direct from Isaiah, uh, chapter 61, where it says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon you because he has anointed you to preach good news. What we'll do is, is sing it as a response. So instead of reusing the words you, we'll say us. So we're saying the spirit of the Lord is, the sovereign Lord is upon us. Um, he, because he has anointed us to preach the good news.
Thank you, Russ and Carol. May we live our lives today and every day in the power of the Spirit, taking the good news of salvation, of God's love to the poor, the brokenhearted, the captives and those in darkness. And so that's the end of our online service once again this week. Um, thank you for joining us and we hope that you will do the same again next week. At the end of this um, service, you will see a slide that comes up, which gives details of our Facebook page, our Twitter and our website. And before we go, we're going to leave you with a sung version of the priestly blessing, which is found in the book of Numbers in the Old Testament of the Bible. So goodbye for this week. Yeah, goodbye. God bless. And Good we'll see you again, again another week. Yeah. Bye. Take care.
you vagabonds, come all you don't belongs, winners and losers, come people like me. Come all you travelers, tired from the journey, come wait a while, stay a while, welcome you'll be. Questioners looking for answers and searching for reasons and sense in it all. Come all you fallen and come all you broken. Find strength for your body and food for your soul. Come to the feast, there is room at the table. Come, let us meet in this place with the king of all kindness. He welcomes us in with the one.